Hello everyone and welcome to my review of Harvestella. In today's review we're going to look at the gameplay, the storyline, the graphics, and the sound. First let's talk about the gameplay and the gameplay we're going to break it down to two different aspects and the two different aspects are the aspects that are on the farm and the aspects that are in the dungeons. For me the farming aspects of this game are top notch. I've seen a few people complain that they think maybe it's a bit simplistic, but for me, I just feel like it's really streamlined. Nothing in the game feels like it's wearing you down, which for me is a problem that I have with a lot of other farming sims, I'm not gonna lie. I don't like it when I feel like there's a ton of different things that I have to do every single day, and in Harvestella you will never feel like that. If you want to spend more time on the farm, you can, but you're never gonna have that feeling of, oh, I have 10 cows that I have to go milk, <laughs> and you know, there's a whole bunch of crops that I have to water, and there's a ton of different things I have to do. No. In this game, farming and raising livestock, it's very fast, and it's very streamlined. Talking about things that you don't have to do every day, you also are not going to have to go and talk to the villagers every single day to make sure that they like you more. That's also something that's not a part of this game at all. Instead, to get closer to the party members and the villagers, you're going to complete side quests. I also kind of prefer this. Um, I don't really like how in most farming sims it's just like you talk to the villager every day and you give them gifts. I like that there's a deeper aspect to it in this game. And again, as I'd said, in this game, you really have the freedom to do whatever you want. You're never going to feel tied down of, oh, I have to go and talk to this villager, or, oh, I have to milk all my cows today. You're never going to have that feeling. You always have this great sense of freedom of you can go and do whatever you want. So that's why for the farming aspects of this game, I've decided to give it a 10 out of 10. The second aspect of the gameplay is going into the dungeons and fighting monsters, switching classes, and exploring the different dungeons. This aspect of the game, it's almost perfect to me. Um, I do really like the battling. I prefer that it's, again, a little bit on the simplistic side because I'm not really that big on action RPGs. Um, I really didn't even enjoy, <laughs> one of my problems with Pokemon Legends Arceus was I didn't really like the boss battles. Um, I'm not really super good at action RPGs, so I really like that in Harvestella it's more about being prepared than knowing exactly when to dodge and when to push the button at the right time. It's more about making sure that you've upgraded your weapons and making sure that you have drinks and food available. But the reason that I'm giving it a 9 out of 10 instead of a 10 out of 10 is that I personally thought maybe a couple of the dungeons were a little bit too long. <laughs> um, especially towards the end of the game, I really wanted to see what happened next in the story, so I just didn't want to wait. <laughs> so I did kind of a little bit rush through the last couple of dungeons, and um, I don't know, for me it was just a little bit annoying if I personally had made this game, I would have tightened that aspect of it up a little bit. So all in all, I'm going to give the gameplay aspect of Harvestella a 9.5 out of 10. The second aspect of Harvestella is the storyline, and the storyline we're also going to split it into two parts. We're going to split it into the main storyline and the side quests. First, talking about the main storyline, okay, I'm not going to lie. I love the storyline of this game. In the beginning, I kind of had my suspicions about a few of the twists and turns that were going to happen, and they did mostly end up coming true, but there were also some things that I did not see coming. And the game really gets deep, especially the further into the game you get, like, um, yeah, it even starts to get deep into like philosophical questions and moral questions. And for me, I love any type of media that makes you think. And by the end of this game, you're definitely going to have to think about some moral dilemmas. So for me, the main storyline of this game is a 10 out of 10. Like, the ending of this game, it blew me away. It was amazing. The next aspect of this game that I want to talk about is the side quests. 
Um, I'm not gonna lie, the first couple of side quests I did, I was not that big a fan. <laughs> a few of the first side quests that you do, they're gonna be a bit on the simplistic side. And so for me, when I started doing the side quests initially, I wasn't really too invested in them. Um, you have to do some where it's like you're helping kids do, do some kind of stupid things. Um, and it didn't really grip me in initially. But as I started doing more and more of the side quests, a few of them, they brought tears to my eyes. And a few of them, they made me laugh. So the storylines that they do in the later game, even the side quests, they're really good. Also, the dialogue choices that they give you in this game, some of them are really funny, and some of them are a bit unique, so I also really appreciated that aspect of it. But, as I said in the beginning, like there were a few side quests that I wasn't so into, um, so on the whole, I'm also going to give this a 9 out of 10. So, for the story aspects of Harvestella, I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10. Next, we're going to focus on the graphics of Harvestella. Um, I've said before, this game is beautiful. I know some people think that the demo was a bit blurry, but for me, once I started playing the full game, I didn't have that issue at all when I was playing Docked. If you play this game Docked, then you're also probably going to think, okay, wow, the graphics in this game are beautiful. 10 out of 10. But if you play this game in handheld mode, like then stuff starts to get really blurry. Um, I played mostly docked, but I played a little bit in handheld mode, um, both for this review and also just because, you know, sometimes stuff happens and you still want to play a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, if you hold it into handheld mode, it's gonna uh, look a lot worse, like really blurry. So if you have a Switch or an OLED Switch and you can just play it um, you know, on the TV, then you're probably going to think the graphics are 10 out of 10. But if you play it uh, in handheld mode, it's probably only going to be like maybe an 8 out of 10. Last, we have the sound. So we're going to talk about the music and the voice acting. For the music, I'm also going to give it a 10 out of 10. Uh, the music in this game is amazing. I'm not going to play it because, you know, I just got into the YouTube Partner Program and I don't want a copyright <laughs> infringement, so I'm going to play it on the safe side, at least for now. Um, but the music in this game is amazing. However, actually my biggest gripe about this game <laughs> is the voice acting. As I said before, I think the main storyline of this game deserves a 10 out of 10. However, it's a bit too dialogue heavy to have us reading everything. Some other games that can kind of get away without having voice acting, like, you know, Story of Seasons, Pokemon, they don't really have voice acting, but there's usually not that much dialogue <laughs> that you're going to be reading, you know, for a long period of time. But in this game, there's a ton of dialogue, and there are some storyline scenes that go on for a long time, and it just would really be improved if there was voice acting throughout. So it's going to lose a point for that. And another bad thing is that there actually is a tiny bit of voice acting in the game where the characters will talk to you a little bit maybe when you run past them. Um, and some of the <laughs> voice acting is on the creepy side, like the fairies that are on your farm, they are going to talk to you when you run by them and also when you leave the farm. And it, I'm not going to lie, it's a little bit creepy, <laughs> some of the things they say. Like you'll leave the farm and they'll be like, bye bye. And it's really creepy. So the music in this game, 10 out of 10. The <laughs> voice acting, or lack thereof, definitely got to lose points for that. So in total, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 on the sound. So the final score that we're going to be giving Harvestella is a 9 out of 10. The gameplay and storyline are really good. However, it has a few strange things that are holding it back from being a perfect 10 out of 10, and those are the <laughs> bad graphics in handheld mode and the lack of voice acting. I do want to give one slight warning, though. 
is that in this game there's going to be farming aspects and there's going to be battling aspects and if you really hate either one of these then you're probably not going to get that much enjoyment out of Harvestella um, and for me personally I prefer farming sims over action RPGs but I still was able to really enjoy this game so buy this game now, buy it on sale, <laughs> you know, just get it when you can. But this is definitely not a game to pass up. Um, yeah, because I really would like to see them continue on doing farming sims. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see. And on that note, I'll see you guys next time.